Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to East Central Missouri and the world, and welcome to the James Strong Show podcast, podcast number 221. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for making us a part of your day. I appreciate it. This podcast was recorded on the evening of Thursday, May the 20th, from the Holiday Inn Express in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. That's right, I'm uh, back to traveling again, uh, probably full schedule, because uh, customers are not only willing to see me, but very anxious to see me, to see anybody, to see vendors, to see uh, people who can help them with applications, which is which is what I do. Uh, spent this week in the state of Wisconsin, uh, just going all throughout the state, much of the state, uh, Milwaukee to Green Bay and to the Fox Cities area where there's a lot of business for me. Uh, and so I thought I'd record a podcast uh, this evening. Why not? Um, topic of the podcast today, I'm going to continue on this series that I've been doing, uh, kind of biographies of very interesting people, people that you may not have known much about, people that have a maybe a, a paranormal or uh, at, at, at least a uh, eclectic spin to them. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a guy named Edgar Casey, who you may or may not have ever heard of. Uh, Edgar Casey was a a psychic, an intuitive, a prophesizer. Uh, or a charlatan. It just depends on what you, uh, well, who, who you believe. But uh, we're going to talk a bit about Edgar Casey, his very unique story, his interesting story, his uh, what he did in his life, and what made him a very, uh, I'll just say, interesting, interesting individual. But before we get into the essay, the story, the biography of Edgar Casey, I did want to talk a little bit about. Uh, the trip this week, what's going on up here and out on the road and in the world in general. Uh, because as I take these trips, as I see and talk to other people, uh, I get other perspectives as to what's going on, just not the perspective from those in East Central Missouri. <clears throat> now, I also understand that many of my podcast listeners, in fact, most of the listeners to the podcast aren't from East Central Missouri. They're from all over the place, uh, not just in this country, but in other countries. Uh, over the last month or so, uh, about 30% of the listeners to my podcast have been from other countries. Uh, South America, Central America, Canada, Europe, India. India continues to be a, a fairly big target for the James Strong Show for whatever reason. But uh, Again, my perspective is from East Central Missouri, but as I travel other places, I get the perspective of, of other people. And other people's perspective as to how things are progressing, opening up, uh, are very interesting, <clears throat> to say the least, uh, from my point of view, and I want to share them with you. This week I've been in Wisconsin, and I will tell you that uh, for the most part, Wisconsin is open for business. Okay, the hotels are full. Uh, the mask mandate is kind of in place. It, it is and it isn't. Uh, and let me go into detail. Most restaurants, most businesses, uh, some businesses, I will say, most restaurants, some businesses, customers of mine, and all hotels still have a mask mandate. Kind of. Uh, Case in point, of my customers, the vast majority of them, about half of them said, yeah, you need to wear a mask. The other half, and that's what it says on the door, that's what they do there. Uh, the other half say, nah, don't worry about it. But I called on one particular customer where there was no mask mandate on the door, so I didn't wear a mask as I entered. Uh, I met with the owner of the company, and he had on a mask. Well, as soon as I saw that, I thought, well, excuse me while I put on my mask. He said, no, 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 you don't have to do that. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> well, that's all I needed to hear, so I didn't worry about it. Um, and he had on a mask, but 90% of the time when he had his mask on, he had it down under his chin. As we toured the factory, everybody in that place had a mask on, or at least on their face, maybe not covering their mouth and nose, except for me. But I didn't get any stares. I didn't get any 
dirty looks. And again, because the guy who owns the place said, don't worry about it. So I didn't. The hotels and the restaurants, again, they've got signs that say, hey, you got to wear a mask in here. So I always wore a mask in there. Until I saw people who worked at the places not wearing a mask. And I thought to myself, you know, especially the hotel rooms or the hotels, I thought to myself, you know, if I'm fully vaccinated, if they want me to wear a mask to protect their employees, I respect that. But if the employees are not wearing a mask, is it really a priority? My decision? No, it wasn't. So I never wore a mask. And of course, they're not going to tell me to put a mask on because the people that work there that run the place aren't wearing a mask either, okay? My perspective on wearing a mask or not wearing a mask has changed a bit. And I think it has to do with the fact that I'm vaccinated, the fact that many people are vaccinated. uh, And maybe it's selfish. Maybe it's just, it's changed because of... uh, uh, the case of infection and uh, case of infection infections are, are are way down, and deaths are almost non-existent. Okay, people aren't dying of this thing anymore. Uh, and remember, remember, the initial reason for wearing the mask, the initial uh, initial goal towards making this pandemic uh, not affect people like it could, is to flatten the curve. In other words, if somebody gets sick, make sure there's a hospital bed for them. We've done that. Uh, In my very humble opinion, for the most part, if you haven't been vaccinated by now, unless you're a child who can't uh, or somebody who is allergic to the vaccine, if you haven't been vaccinated by now, you don't want to get vaccinated. You're not going to get vaccinated. You're either an anti-vaxxer or you're such a procrastinator that you just haven't gotten around to it yet. Now, you can walk into any schnooks or uh, drugstore or hospital and and get vaccinated right now. If you're in St. Louis, you can go down to Bush Stadium and get vaccinated. Or the, uh, uh, the, they used to call it the TWA Dome. I don't know what they call it now. And just walk in and get a vaccination. In fact, they'll give you free cardinal tickets, two free cardinal tickets if you get a vaccination. If you don't have a vaccination by now, you don't want to get a vaccination. And if I have to wear a mask to protect you, and you don't care enough to get a vaccination for yourself, sorry, Charlie, you're on your own, and I do wish you luck. But I'm not going to wear a mask because you don't want to get a vaccination. Is that selfish? Maybe. It could be. But that's just how I've changed just a little bit. Um, Vaccinations worldwide. Um, I've said this before, and I will always say this. I hope I will always say this as long as I live. The United States of America is the best place to live in the free world, in the, in the whole world. <clears throat> okay. Case in point, we're about 37% vaccinated, more than virtually any country in the world. The UK is 30% vaccinated. Many poorer countries are not. Many rich countries are not. Canada, 4%. New Zealand, 3%. Korea, South Korea, <clears throat> less than 3% vaccinated. And the reason? Vaccine production. Now, what I mean by that is most of the vaccines in the world are manufactured in the U.S., the U.K., (coughs) or India. The U.S. and U.K. are using it for their own folks and for the Europeans. Some, Some vaccines are manufactured in Europe. India, they make most of the vaccines, and they've decided to keep most of them for themselves because India is arguably having more problems than any country in the world. And they said, look, we're not going to manufacture these anymore and send them out to other people. We're going to keep them for our own. I certainly understand that. Uh, Now, why can't they just manufacture these vaccines in other places? (coughs) Because of intellectual property. Okay, intellectual property protection prevent other people from manufacturing these vaccines. Also, (coughs) the Russians and the Chinese manufacture vaccines. Uh, but they're not as uh, effective, nor are they trusted as much as the Western vaccines, as the uh, the Pfizer, Moderna, J and J, AstraZeneca. Okay, uh, some doses are wasted. You've heard that, but but when you consider that once they open a batch, a batch has to be used. You want to have. It's better to have too many than not enough. You don't want to be somebody who's in line for a vaccine. They say, "Sorry, Charlie, we're out." 
Now, how many doses are being wasted in this country? Not as much as you would think. 0.4% of all doses have been wasted so far. Okay? 0.4%. Less than one half of 1% have been wasted. Uh, One of the reasons I was able to be vaccinated and my wife was able to be vaccinated before we technically uh, fell into that category of people who needed to be vaccinated was because when I took my parents to be vaccinated, who were certainly uh, qualified and candidates because of their age, they said, hey, we have extra. You want to get vaccinated today? And I said, sure. So I was vaccinated and my wife was vaccinated because they didn't want that vaccine to go to waste. So again, are some being wasted? Sure. Less than one half of 1%. I think that's very good in my opinion. And the uh, vaccine manufacturers are now shipping in smaller batches, so less and less will be uh, uh, less and less will be wasted. We're also in the process of uh, exporting to other countries. We're negotiating with South Korea to send a bunch to them. Uh, Mexico and Canada are going to get 4 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine from the United States. 20 million doses of the other, you know, Moderna, Pfizer, J&J are going to be sent to other countries very soon as well. In fact, they may have already started. So, we're doing the best we can, I think. Uh, some people are saying we're being selfish and not sharing the vaccine with others. But what you need to remember is the same thing goes, the same thing applies here as applies to when you go on an airplane. Okay? When you're on an airplane, before they take off, they do the whole thing, you know, uh, here's the safety precautions you need to listen to before we take off. And the one thing they say is if you've got a small child, put your mask on first. When you're okay, then take care of that small child. Because if you're not okay, you can't help them. You can say what you want, but the United States still rules the roost in this world. We need to make sure we have our oxygen mask on before we can help the others. Again, is that callous or crude? Maybe. But if you think about it, it's factual as well. The other thing I've seen here, uh, the economy is opening up. Uh, but the supply chains are very stressed. My customers, the company that I work for, are having some problems with getting supplies in. Uh, As the economy opens up, there's two problems. Raw materials and people to do the job. Okay? And they kind of go hand in hand. I mean, if you need people to build the stuff, to build the stuff, and there's nobody working... Well, not more, less, less people that need to be working, working, that's a problem. Um, slowly but surely, we're backing off as a country on these uh, uh, extra unemployment benefits, <clears throat> which I think are supposed to go till September, but maybe some of, them, some of the companies are backing them off in June. Some of the states are backing them off in June, which is a good thing. <clears throat> because, friends, there's more jobs out here than you can shake a stick at. Restaurants. Hotels, everybody needs people. Manufacturing firms need to know people. And I've said this once and I'll continue to say it. If you don't have a job now, you don't want to have a job. Okay, enough of that. Uh, that's what's going on out here in the, uh, in the outside world. So let's get into the topic, the biography, the essay for today. It has to do with a gentleman named Edgar Casey. Uh, who is Edgar Casey? You may have heard the heard the term. I, I was introduced to Edgar Casey on on an Art Bell episode years ago, and Edgar Casey was born a long time ago, eighteen seventy seven. Okay, and he was a a clairvoyant who claimed to channel from his higher self. Casey's sessions occurred during a trance state when he would fall asleep. Now his friend Al Lane, his wife. And his later secretary, Gladys Turner, would record his words, okay, while he fell asleep. Now, during these sessions, Casey would answer questions on subjects as varied as healing, reincarnation, dreams, the afterlife, past life, nutrition, and the lost city of Atlantis, as well as future events. Now, Casey was a devout Christian and a Sunday school teacher. 
and his prophesizing claims were a source of trouble with him because channeling was typically criticized by practitioners of his faith as being demonic. 